Now let's go ahead and talk about fixed assets and the depreciation side of things. So we're going to talk about three different methods throughout this section, including the straight line method, units of production, and double declining balance. So first of all, let's re refresh on what we're dealing with here with the fixed assets. We're dealing with an asset that has been capitalized. Now the term capitalized means that it has been recorded as an asset up front and it'll be converted to an expense later on. So you may recall this from the adjusting entry discussion. We start off with whatever the purchase price uh, was for the asset, whatever other costs we incurred, and we record this as an asset up front, and then again we spread the cost out over the life of the asset. So the goal here is to match the expenses with the revenues. The thought is that if we're using this equipment for 10 years, for example, to generate more revenue, it makes sense to record some of that expense over 10 years instead of all at once. Depreciation, when you hear that term, you've probably heard that term from your personal financial uh, life. Depreciation outside of accounting is generally referring to the decline in fair market value. For example, you may hear somebody say that when they purchase a brand new car, it depreciates immediately as soon as you take it off the lot. It depreciates by quite a bit. The fair market value has declined because the vehicle is no longer brand new and instead is used. For accounting purposes, we are more concerned with the allocation of cost. We're not trying to match the decline in fair market value. And in fact, later on in later sections, we'll see that the fact that we don't match the decline in fair market value leads to a gain or loss when we ultimately sell that asset. So again, we're not really concerned with trying to match that. So just a brief example here. If we purchase an asset for $10,000, it's going to last 10 years. It's sensible to, to assume that $1,000 should be recorded as depreciation each year. So this is just a graph showing how we start off with $10,000, and then over the years it gradually decreases. The net book value decreases until by year 10, we're down to zero, and this chart is a you know a little off. It should show zero at the end. Now that year three, let's go back to year three here. You can see we're right at eight thousand dollars of uh, net book value. So actually, at year three, it should be seven thousand. So year three, we have taken, and we'll see an actual depreciation schedule in the next slide. We would have taken three years of depreciation at $1,000 per year. So our equipment's value was $10,000. We would subtract out $3,000 of what's going to be referred to as accumulated depreciation. In other words, all the depreciation we've recorded throughout the life of this asset up to this point. Three years times $1,000 is $3,000. So after we subtract that, we have $7,000 left for the equipment's value. That's referred to as the net book value of the equipment. So these are assets that are on the balance sheet. You'll see the fixed assets, less their accumulated depreciation. That gives you the net book value. So here's an example of a depreciation schedule. Now this shows how the asset is being depreciated throughout its life. We have 10 years here. The beginning net book value was $10,000. We are going to depreciate $1,000 per year. That's what I mentioned in our example. So now notice under this yellow column heading, we have two different things, depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. We're going to see the journal entry for that in just a bit. But basically, under the method we used, which was basically straight line, we're going to see the exact same amount of depreciation each year. The total accumulated depreciation Again, that tells us over the life of the asset up to this point, we've accumulated this much depreciation. Notice that we have $3,000 of depreciation accumulated by that point, which brings our ending net book value down to $7,000. And obviously, if you look at the spreadsheet, $7,000 for year three at the end carries forward to become year four's beginning net book value. At the end of this asset's life, under our example, we would have accumulated the full $10,000 of depreciation 
which would leave us with a zero ending net book value. So now let's move on to the journal entry itself. I've given you a hint as to what it'll look like here, the depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. But let's talk about what is not the correct answer. So we know we're going to be debiting depreciation expense to increase it. We're using up the asset and we're converting it to an expense. So the debit to depreciation expense for $1,000 makes sense. What may make sense, if you just think about it without understanding the actual journal entry, you may think that we should reduce the equipment cost. We've used up $1,000 of it, so we should reduce it by 1000 At first glance, it makes sense. Credit equipment for $1,000, we would reduce the equipment's value by $1,000. However, that is not the correct journal entry. In accounting, we do not touch the cost of the asset. Uh, for depreciation purposes, at least, we don't reduce it directly. Instead, we record uh, a credit to what's known as accumulated depreciation, which as we saw on the balance sheet, this offsets the asset value. So instead of directly reducing equipment, we increase accumulated depreciation, which indirectly reduces the asset's net book value. So accumulated depreciation is known as a contra asset account. Whenever you hear the term contra for any account, it means we are offsetting that account. So it's, it's going to have the opposite normal balance, and we're going to see it, in this case, on the balance sheet as a reduction to the equipment cost. So assets have a normal debit balance. This contra asset accumulated depreciation is going to have a normal credit balance. Therefore, we are crediting this account to increase it which reduces the overall asset value, the net book value. A few terms you want to be familiar with, net book value, contra asset, and accumulated depreciation. So over time, we're going to see a few things on the depreciation schedule. We're going to see that the accumulated depreciation is increasing until it finally hits either the full cost of the asset or whatever we are trying to depreciate. And we'll see that here in just a second. Uh, the net book value of the asset is decreasing. Again, it's the accumulated depreciation offsets that. So as soon as that increases, your net book value decreases. So now the question here is how much should we record per year? In our example, we said $1,000 sounds reasonable. It's an even amount per year. But in reality, it's going to depend on a few things. It's important to understand here, I have it bolded, red font, depreciation is an estimate. So anything we do with depreciation, we're always assuming certain things. Now, what we have here in this case, uh, we have the method. We need to figure out what method are we using. We talked about the three methods at the beginning. We have straight line double declining balance, and units of production. There are other methods, but these are the three most common. 